Hi everybody. Uh, welcome to week three of Garb August. And as promised, I read uh, the Gila. Well, I guess you can call it Gila, but I think it's pronounced Gila because it is a Spanish word. And uh, there's the cover. It's obviously I I generally read uh, ebooks. And the other book, uh, there, there are a couple other books that I read. Um, one that I haven't quite finished yet is Wheels from Degrassi, but I'm going to make... Okay, why not lean into it? I am going to make this one its own video just because I want to talk about Degrassi. And I don't get to talk about Degrassi because this is generally a horror channel, but I will be talking about Degrassi in the next video. And Wheels by Susan Nielsen. Um, so, Hila... Oh, and the other book that I wanted to talk about, I'll talk about Heal in a minute. Uh, <laughs> this one, again, was literal trash. Um, back in probably around the year 2000, my friend Liz and I were at the, we were at the, um, sorry, trying to do two things at once here. Uh, we, we were at, uh, Williams, which is right beside the city hall in my hometown. And Liz comes back from the bathroom. She's like, oh, she says, just right in where the, where they put the tampons. And I'm like, what are you talking about? So I went to investigate and in one of the cubicles, uh, there was somebody had taken a copy of wilderness tips by Margaret Atwood and slid it into the, uh, sanitary napkin, disposal box that hangs on the wall behind the, the toilet. So I rescued wilderness tips from the trash. And unfortunately I don't have my copy of it. I wasn't able to find it, but I did, uh, but the, of uh, the one that I have is this cover and the cover has changed, uh, for the Kindle. So the, the uh, Kindle book that I bought, because, you know, why not, got the original for free. And why is that a different cover? That looks entirely different. What the heck? Sorry, I'm trying to ca call up the cover here, but for some reason this cover comes up. But then when you put it into my library, it is that cover. So I have no idea. I guess maybe there's, well, I mean, obviously there's several covers. Uh, so that was released in 1991 and I only got to read the first story, but it was quite fitting because the story is called True Trash. So a trash book with a story about trash and the particular trash that that refers to is the True Confessions magazines. Uh, and the story is about a group of young people at an island summer camp. And the, it starts out and the, there's a bunch of young women who are, a lot of them are university students. Some of them, they're around that age. Uh, some of them are just, you know, working young adults and they're working at this, uh, this camp and they're kind of like put on a pedestal because they're not in the same sort of tier as either the campers or as the counselors who are mostly young, who are actually, I believe, are all young men. So generally the young men kind of hook up with the waitresses, but the waitresses have these little uniforms and on their break, they go, they go swimming. Um, and the campers like to watch them with their little binoculars, right? And so it's just, it's just a story about, uh, what happens one summer. Um, and just the relationships between the waitresses and how they, relate to the boys that they start dating and then there's one girl who kind of seems to be like the one that they all look up to and all the boys have a crush on her and she's her name's Ronette and uh, she catches pregnant and they're like oh what are you gonna do about it oh well it's not that guys and it's always kind of and she leaves the camp and it's kind of a mystery who the father is and then um Margaret Atwood has this really interesting way of drawing these characters that uh, you have such a short time to talk about them, but there is a development in what happens between here and then the repercussions 
it can be years, years later, right? So 10 years later, one of the other waitresses, who is, I guess, nominally the person who's at least observing all of these things, runs into one of the campers, and we find out, you know, what happened and how Ronette got pregnant and... Um, but it, but it's, it's, it's an interesting story and I just, I just wanted to talk about it because it was called True Trash and it was the book I rescued from the trash. So now speaking of trash, Gila by Catherine Patasek. Oh my goodness. What a hilarious book. <laughs> Fairly. What's the word I'm looking for? Predictable. <laughs> um, I'm going to give it four out of five stars four out of five trash cans it's wonderfully trashy it's a lot of fun um the story goes that uh well first of all um Catherine Patasek is I, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right I apologize if I'm not um she I've been following her for a long time since I think about 2010 way back when I was a member of the Horror Writers Association and Kathy was actually my mentor um uh, my writing mentor <coughs> excuse me and, you know, I mean, if you're new to horror writing and you want to improve your writing a little bit, the Horror Writers Association Mentor Program is, is actually quite valuable. It's, you, you get a lot of good feedback and uh, you, you can talk to a professional about the ins and outs of the business and, and uh, develop kind of a working relationship. Um, and she's a very nice lady. Uh, she's now most of her posts on Facebook are like her cats. <laughs> she's an old cat lady and she's got, you know, she gardens and so she talks about her plants and her cats and, and every once in a while she, uh, she talks about, uh, her husband, Charlie Grant, who was another horror writer who passed away. I'm not sure when he passed, but, uh, occasionally she'll talk about, you know, his letters or something that she, she found. So it's, it's kind of a nice little insight into, into this kind of private world. Um, anyway, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> uh, the introduction to the book, uh, she talks about writing under the pseudonym Les Simons, and she said she just liked it because of all the S's, Les Simons. And Gila checks two bingo card boxes. One is obviously a killer animal and the other is written under a pseudonym so the story is that <laughs> giant gila monsters are heading north through the desert in new mexico on their way to albuquerque and they got big after generations and generations of being exposed to radiation they were a bomb went off in the desert in 1945 and ever since then they've just been each generation has just been getting bigger and bigger, and now these things are, you know, the size of a tanker truck. And there's a big swarm of them, and they are just destroying and killing everything. So there's scene after scene of these rampaging helas. And, and I mean, it's almost gleeful the way these things are are, are uh, described with, you know, like the, the oozing green venom coming out of their mouths and you know, crunching everybody's and bodies, parts flying and you know, walls falling down because these things are just so massive. It's really a fun read. <laughs> and then, of course, because this is a, and, and Catherine herself describes it as a big bug story, um, it really does have the quality of one of those B movies, you know, or even Jaws or, uh, you know, a movie like that. Um, so you have the, so the secondary plot, or, well, I guess the other part of the plot is a some kind of, she's a, she's a lizard expert from the university, and her name's Dr. Kate Dwyer, and when she gets called to this town in New Mexico to investigate, she meets and hooks up with uh, an ex-colleague, this guy named Chato, Chato, and he's Apache, and there's some slightly uncomfortable racist language, but it does take pains to look at how he would have been treated in this world, which is, you know, it's commendable. It's, it's not, it's not terrible, but it's still kind of a product of the way that things were written at the time. Right. So, um, so this expert, this lizard expert and her boyfriend, um, they have to 
get it clear to the government officials and the military who just want to go in and napalm these things, which is just a really bad thing to do, especially, I mean, the desert ecosystem is so fragile anyway. You do anything to it, it's going to be destroyed. So they decide that they want to come in and napalm it. And then they start talking about nuking these things and they're like, no, <laughs> it will never recover. Um, so there's this kind of back and forth. And then every so often at completely inappropriate times, they, they, uh, Kate and Chato run off and have sex <laughs> just because, you know, um, so eventually they do end up finding a solution and everything's happy. And then of course there's this, you know, what they call the sting in the tail, which is that, no, nope, those were the babies. They're all coming around again. So, <laughs> and, uh, just for funsies, I, <laughs> um, I was looking for a video of Gila Monsters, and I found uh, Coyote Peterson is his name. He does a show called Brave Wilderness, and this guy, this is the guy who, who runs around and deliberately allows himself to get bitten by various creatures, but in this case, he wasn't looking for it, and it's kind of hilarious. Even I. Yeah, yeah, let's watch that one more time. Even I make mistakes. Yeah, getting too close. Ah! <laughs> Look at how gorgeous that, that is, that big fat belly. <laughs> so there's a heel of bite for you so you don't have to experience it yourself because it's apparently quite painful. He, uh, This guy claims it's one of the most painful things that's ever bitten him, and he's been bitten by everything, so... Um, anyway, I'll leave you with the, uh, the Gila monster. And it, the, the, I think the thing that does make the story is that, um, the author really does enjoy the subject matter, not just the fact of sending these rampaging beasts around, but these, these critters are really neat. <laughs> and so to have them running around and, you know, killing everybody, it, it, it is just, it's a fun read. It's a, it's it's silly, it's trashy, it's a big bug book, and what else can I say, right? It's, it's what it is. <laughs> and that's one of the things that we look for in Garb August. Four trash cans out of five. I mean, shallow characters, ridiculous premise, inopportune sex, government plot to have to overcome, and the possibility of a nuke. I mean, what else can you ask for in a big bug book? Hope you're reading lots of, lots of great horror. Have a great day.